What is it, as director, with the, with the staff team, am I leading here? Um, and we've chosen four things. One is around advocacy. We need to get our message out there. And um, we need to make that a powerful part of our work. The second is about the transformation of schools based on these values. How are we going to do that? And we've identified in the report three particular areas. We want to um, uh, provide consultancy to schools who want to know more about human scale education. Progress program from Antidote is going to be part of the offer that we can, we can put out there. We want to, through the international um, program, which has been talked about already, to build uh, understanding of human scale practice in Denmark and the States and, and elsewhere. And thirdly, we're working up a particular program uh, which is called research, the Development and Research Communities, hosted by human scale schools, which will develop, test, implement and actually disseminate human scale practice. And to do that, we're working and beginning to draw together a number of national partners. So this is, uh, as you'll see in a minute, with the cooperative movement, who want us to work in their schools, innovation unit, who are helping us to design the program so that we can take it forward. It's with uh, the National um, School of Child and Adolescent Psychotherapy up in Leeds, which is developing bespoke training in emotional factors and teaching and learning that might go into the prototype of, of the school, and, and with various other parts. I've come across, whether it's the whole education network or a whole range of other groups, more organisations, actually from left and right, uh, concerned about the lack of discussion about what the purpose of yes. education is. Yes, exactly. And it does seem to me that we've got into a kind of very managerialist period mm. where, where the thing we don't ask is the question that Richard Pring and his team poised at the end of the Nuffield 14 to 19 review, which is what does it mean to be an educated 19 year old? of any ability level, and that's critical. Mm -hmm. So clearly the answer is not a set number of grades. Um, what does it mean to be an educated in IT world? Well? What do we want every young person to have? And of course we all want different uh, things beyond that for, for individuals. And, and that seems to me to, to tie into something Satish said and others have picked up, Mike picked up with a point about grades in particular. What does success look like? And funnily enough, that's the question that a lot of the managerialists of the evaluation industry keep asking them. What does success look like? Actually, I think we've got to stop, start saying to them, it doesn't look like a bar graph anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a series of, of, of qualities. And in particular, it seems to me we've got to initiate a discussion about educational breadth. Because, and I say this, this is a moment for you all to hiss, as a former GCSE chief examiner, that 10 GCSEs does not equal breadth. It's 10 variations on a theme, or best still, two or three themes. Uh, and that actually, I was really taken with your point about 50% um, uh, <coughs> academic, because I, I reproach myself, because I've been arguing for merely a two-thirds academic curriculum, because it seems to me that if we could win the argument with the, you know, those maybe some of us among them, but there's broad-shouldered, middle-class parents that actually it's not good for their kids to have 10 GCSEs. And that actually every young person should do, should have some exposure to a good academic curriculum, but to a good vocational, I prefer to call it professional, curriculum, to a good community and citizenship mm -hmm. curriculum, mm -hmm. talking about removing citizenship yeah. from the national curriculum, and colleagues from our passion of, of mine. And we need to have that kind of discussion about breath. It seems to me nobody ever asks for more than five A to C's anyway. So exactly. why we get the brightest kids to do ten is completely beyond me. The reason why the opening's there, I feel, is that currently the system's gridlocked. That, that we've got to a stage where the more successful we become with the 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, the more excluded the 40, 30, 20 become. And that leads us to gated communities, whichever side of them we're on. It leads them to alarmed homes and all the rest of it, it leads them, leads us to people being worried about walking home at night and it leads to, 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 to the disturbances we've seen this, this summer. Uh, so I just think, maybe, even with, even with the kind of challenges of the free school stuff, which may provide some opportunities, but we, 
we choose them carefully and ethically. I think there is a real opportunity here. And um, uh, I think we all agree that Satish was inspirational yeah. in speaking to us first. Mm -hmm. But I think I inadvertently de-skilled or didn't give sufficient value to the rest of you in saying that. Because the one thing we mustn't do is think this can be delivered by gurus or great speakers. It can only be delivered by us.